With Secret Rings first launched in 2007, it introduced Sonic to the capabilities of motion controls. In this video, I'm going to be looking at three mainline Sonic games that utilize motion controls. So that's going to be Unleash, Secret Rings, and The Black Knight and see which one utilizes motion controls in the best way possible. Starting off, we have Sonic Unleashed. While the PS3 slash Xbox 360 version had the better version, of course, the Wii version actually did play pretty well from having like a different version compared to the other consoles. One similar trait that Secret Rings and Unleashed share is the ability to shake the Wii mode to perform the homing attack. Similar to the PS and Xbox version though, the homing attack and bush boost are performed using the same command, however, when using the boost in the Wii version, the boost meter is, is immediately depleted and isn't sl drained slowly while being used. So if you're shaking it and have lots of boost meter, Sonic will stop boosting in between each boost. That pretty much covers Sonic in his daytime form, so let's talk about the Werehog gameplay. So as many of you know, the night stages are, a bit, are this beat em up slash hack and slash stages which use his new Werehog abilities for attacking. So. For attacking, the Nunchuck and Wemo are both controlling his arms for attack, so like when you shake it, it does these predetermined attacks, similar to um, Twilight Princess for do performing attacks with the sword. Th Thankfully, you did not need like what Wemo should plus, plus similar to how you would for Skyward Sword when performing such attacks. I did have a lot of fun using both the Wii and, and the Nunchuck for these kinds of combat, because um, I played... Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the Wii version, which um, used the Wii and Nunchuck for the boss fights to, to punch punch your opponents out. So I really had a good time playing with it. The only weird concept I found is how Sonic climbs up poles. Normally, when you climb up poles in the PS3 slash Xbox 360 version, it's a normal climbing, and you're able to shimmy up around the pole. While in the Wii. You have to consistently shake the controller and Sonic won't stay up in the air the same area he's currently on at the pole and he'll immediately fall down. It's really interesting to find these kinds of differences between each version of the game, especially when the Wii had a lot of third party games like Call of Duty and Mortal Kombat that had their own unique control scene. I do say that the Pro Controller and GameCube is of course the best way to go for like the modern Sonic stages, but I feel you might have a bit more fun doing the night stages with the Wemo and the Nunchuck. Alright, next up we have Sonic and the Secret Rings. Where do I begin? So, I know Unleashed and Black Knight came later on, but I didn't understand why the playstyle for Sonic, uh, instead of like using the Wemo and the Nunchuck, you we're just mainly using the Wiimote sideways, and yet you had like Twilight Princess and Mario Galaxy, which had the Wiimote and Nunchuck, and then Sir Rink was like, "Yeah, we finna have the Wiimote do everything without Nunchuck support." Also, I am used to long tutorials, but man, did this game feel the need to explain all the controls, and yet it only it felt bare minimum for like what I was doing at all. I'm normally used to like getting a bunch of explanations throughout the game but they just tell you everything right off the bat. For Sonic's movement, it's weird. You need to tilt the Wiimote left and right as if it were like a mobile game and you were like playing something like Temple Run. And if it also kept on getting confusing like for how we would move forward, cause like you had to like still tilt it forward and I think it was automatic. You weren't able to like make Sonic move faster without the use of meter. For the homing attack, you know, this also did have the, I think this game did have the first um, lock on for the homing attack, so that was good to see because um, it would first show green and then if it was re completely ready for you to hit the enemy, it would just lock on red so you can hit the enemy. But there were like a few times where it didn't actually completely lock on, so it felt weird to even see the uh, auto radical when it was trying to find an enemy. Now for a few gameplay gimmicks, the one that controlled the weirdest was probably the catapult and the switches. For the switches, they were just like stuck to the walls or just like on the ground, and yet they didn't activate um, if you like hit them with the homing attack. You actually had to just touch them just by like simply jumping. So it felt really weird, and I didn't really understand why they um, didn't really have like an activate button similar to like how they did for. Um, Heroes in Adventure 2, 
Hang on, for the catapult, I would just like, it, it was, I don't understand, like, I, I still pulled back for the Wiimote, and yet it didn't even launch Sonic, so I don't know what was going wrong. I think I was, because I would still pull back, lift him, and yet he would just fall, fall all the way down, and he would respond, so I don't know what was going on. My real big issue with this game and one that um, Black Knight shares is moving backwards with Sonic. Cause, like normally in any game, you have the ability to go back and if you missed anything and control where your character, um, wherever he moves. But in both of these games, he mainly just walks backwards very slowly. I didn't really understand why the devs didn't try to include that kind of motion for Sonic trying to move backwards if you missed something important. Surprisingly, I did try Sonic Colors using only the Wemo um, played horizontally, and it, it has a lot more control over Sonic than it did in Secret Rings with only using the D-pad to move in instead of tilting, showing off how much change can happen with different mappings on the controller. While this game isn't necessarily bad, I do like to see more control being put into uh, moving Sonic. Finally, we have Sonic and the Black Knight, the successor to Secret Rings and the last storybook adventure in this Dual Geo series. But before I do start, I will draw a few more comparisons to the sword actions being performed in this game to Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword due to how well they um, use motion controls for sword combat. The first thing I do want to highlight is to have the movement be placed into the nunchuck stick and placing all of the motion controls into the sword. I think that was a great concept for how they act for when developing this game for performing sword attacks in combat it's similar to how you would for twilight princess where it already has chosen sword attacks when you shake the wemo so if you do ever try to um attack with the sword like let's say a slash moving the wemo up and down or left and right it won't matter since these actions have already been programmed to perform by shaking the wemo there isn't anything wrong with that but i do like the attention to detail and controlling those kinds of actions similar to how you would in skyward sword the homing attack in this game had a great balance in letting you first do the normal homing attack and then close in to attack with the sword i i find that concept to be really great and i think they executed it well with this game now what really separates um this game from like the other two is the use of the gauge system so instead of just rapidly shaking or using a d-pad to Increase your speed or to perform the boost you'd first hold B and then shake the Wiimote to um, use the gauge so I think that works way better than just like continuously shaking because like you only need to shake it once and just hold down the B button so once you do you're just rapidly moving until you reach an enemy and then take them out this I, I find to be very investing since it makes you um, take out all your enemies before advancing throughout the level. This also had a great use for the boss fights since during the boss fights with Arthur and Merlina as well as the um, the Knights of the Round Table, you um, would fight like uh, incoming projectiles to build up the soul gauge. Also, speaking of the boss fights, let's talk about a few of the fights real quick. The duels with the Knights are possibly the best experience I've had for sword boss fights. The best part of it is like the final clash in the rival flights where your swords clash and then you just have to shake rapidly to knock the sword out of their hands now arthur's boss on the other hand no i hit him i hit him no 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 i quit i quit i'm done i'm done i'm done and that pretty much covers all i have on black knight now while all of these have their own unique way of utilizing motion controls i have to say it's black knight that best uses motion controls while secret rings does have great level design and great music the controls do f feel very limited in contrast to black knight and unleash which use the nunchuck however i do like the concept of not using the nunchuck for every game because it can get tiring using it for almost everything and while unleash introduced the boost mechanic for sonic the wii version if you are to play with the nunchuck i feel is only better with the night stages in the gamecube controller and the pro controllers is the better experience you may get if you're not trying to use the Wii mode at all. Either way, these games did good using the motion controls, but Black Knight, I see, is the best game to best use motion controls. 
I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know what you think about this new format I'm doing. I plan to cover more gameplay aspects in Sonic games in the future. And let me know what core make game mechanics you want me to cover next. Be sure to smash that subscribe and like button for more. Thanks for watching. GG's, y'all.